welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly podcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. And Robert is... Going to be with us, but not not this time. He uh, is a little under the weather, and so he wasn't able to make this recording. So, uh, yeah, I was hoping we have him, you know, twice in a row, but didn't. I, that would uh, cause the statistics of the universe to just <laughs> implode <Yeah>. or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, all right. Well, Jesse. I know we talked about this pre-show, but I'm going to ask you today because <laughs> this is what we do here. What have you been doing this past couple of weeks, guitar-wise? This is your favorite question to ask me because you always so so uh, shame me and what we've done guitar-wise. Well, first off, I'd like to say that uh, I apologize to our – we apologize to our viewers that we were off for what was this, four weeks now. It took four weeks. Um, some of that was my trip to uh, England in which I did not have a guitar, so – I'm off the hook for two weeks. <laughs> As for the other two weeks, well, <laughs> since you gave me those guitar magazines, I was practicing some uh, Chuck Berry riffs. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, otherwise, some noodling, some scales, some jazz chords, uh, pretty much the same stuff. No new songs, really. Um, trying to polish a little bit of uh, some 80s white lion, uh, but that's about it as far as the songs go. Um, so there we are, short and sweet. Now, why don't you pontificate on what you've been doing? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a few things. Uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a month, and yeah, I, you know, I agree with the apology that uh, it's been a while for us, but we've had things going on, and uh, so um, I have, however, not been uh, without my guitar. I've had my guitars uh, around me for the last four weeks, and I've been working on a variety of things. One of the things I've been working on are some new songs. Um, Basically, the the rhythm of the new, or I shouldn't say the rhythm, the chord progression uh-huh. of some of these new songs. One of them is a, I believe it's a jazz standard. My knowledge of jazz is very minimal, though. And it's called Straight No Chaser, which my mm-hmm. instructor had recogni- recommended to sort of break me out of this 12-bar blues, or even some of the more basic variations of the 12-bar blues um, patterns that I know. And this one has a uh, 251 pattern in it where it starts off with a as a basic blues with a quick change uh b flat no i'm sorry f sorry it's an f and um the quick change would be to the b flat mm-hmm. and uh then you know, it goes to uh b flat again for uh two bars bars four and five and then you have a bar of f like you normally would in a blues right but then in the eighth bar you're going to change up a little bit and you're going to play a a flat and a D. So this is an A flat seven, a D seven, D dominant seven, mm-hmm. and then go to a G minor seven, which then returns to a C and then back to the F. So this is a very different sort of uh, pattern in a way for that part of the song. And the purpose is to get my ear used to hearing this kind of thing. Right. Uh, yeah, and I think so. I haven't really gotten into soloing over it yet. Uh, I'm hoping that my lesson actually will be tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit about how do you solo over um, this kind of thing. Because you're basically changing keys when you go to that 2-5-1 part, mm-hmm. from what I understand. And uh, I think what you end up having to do is solo in G minor would be my my guess. Or G minor pentatonic, anyway, for right. those two bars. And then go back to your, your F pentatonic um, scale, if you so desire. Yeah. Yeah, so two five one is kind of the jazz version of the rock one four five or blues one four five one four one five, you know, and so yeah, that's pretty much your introduction to it, and that's sort of the core. And then they'll change the keys all around, and some jazz tunes they'll change the key every couple of bars, you know. And, um, yeah, and, and the two really functions the same as a four. You know, if you if you look at it like a two with a seventh chord, a two minor seven chord has all the same notes as a as a four major chord with the added, um, you know, two the added G note. Good. So it really works 
pretty much it functions the same way. It leads you to the five, which leads you back to the one. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, and I noticed that like hearing it, I've noticed, oh, OK. After I got over the how do you make this change because I'm so used to the box that you know the one four five box oh, yeah. that you know, I've been, now i've been able to play it and listen to it while i'm playing it so i can get a sense of what's going on i was really hoping to be get get to the point where a loop pedal like i said a loop pedal and play through it and start soloing just didn't quite get there uh mm-hmm. last couple of weeks um because on top of that uh we were also i've also been working on freddie the freeloader mm-hmm. which again the first um well, really, the first 10 bars starts as a blues and B flat. Mm-hmm. But then what happens, and I think it's Miles Davis that wrote this. What happens is he changes to a um, A flat seventh chord for the last two bars. So I guess that would be the minor seventh. What was the first chord again? Uh, B flat. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yes, the minor seventh chord. Uh, for the last two and then go back to the progression back to that B flat and play through a regular 12 bar blues in B flat. Mm -hmm. So there's this aspect where this minor seven uh, pops up or flat seven pops, I guess that flat seven pops up and um, sort of is a weird sound to the ear because all the blues that I play, you know, I hear four or excuse me, five, four, and then I want to hear one. Right. Right. And now this is flat seven. So uh, just a very interesting uh, thing for my ear to get used to. And again, I didn't get to a point where I was soloing over it because I was just practicing that chord progression. Right. But I'm hoping to maybe this coming week, break out the loop pedal, start uh, playing through that. So um, in addition to straight no chaser, Afraid of the freeloader. Uh, I've also been uh, basically making some serious progress on something I've always wanted to do since I learned how to play guitar, and that's finish Iron Man. <laughs> the solo. <laughs> yes. So I, I've known this song. I've played most of Iron Man since my first year playing guitar. Uh, it's mm-hmm. one of the first songs I learned, you know, that that awesome riff, all that. And then the solo. And, you know, you as a first year guitar player, you hear Tony Iommi Internet solo when it's like, holy crap, what the hell is going on? And it sounds like this thing, like, I don't know, as a guitar student, things like it runs forever. And like, it's just it. how could a mortal person ever play that right that's what it's to a first year guitar player that's what it sounds like Mm -hmm. and so last summer i said you know what i'm going to make my summer mission to learn the iron man solo and i listened to it a few more times like oh the hell with that (laughs) (laughs) and so this summer i come back and i'm like all right um last couple of weeks i decided it's time i'm gonna learn the iron man solo i had this black sabbath tab book which i know is the lazy way of doing things but you know what that's how i do things Mm -hmm. and so i cracked open the tab book listened to the solo i'm like okay i can do this right and I look at the tab book and it's like, it's 16 bars. At least the first solo is 16 bars. I believe mm-hmm. that's right. And uh, I thought, wow, I can play this. So a couple weeks ago, I started working through the Iron Man solo. And I've got quite a bit of it under my fingers. I just about an hour ago, actually, um, put together the last few bars, mm-hmm. working on memorizing that. And so I can start playing it to time. Um, and it's doable now. Yeah. Progress. It's amazing what a couple of years and a bunch of hours of practice will do for you. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Cause I mean, like a couple, you know, a few years ago, even last summer, I thought this was an unattainable goal. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And now, you know, I'm looking at it and like, okay, first off it's C sharp minor pentatonic. Right. Right. That's what the solo was in. And, uh, it's 16 bars. There is a second solo, which I haven't, but it's in a shorter. Haven't gotten into that yet. But, you know, it's still, I go to YouTube and YouTube, you can slow down the video. Mm-hmm. So I can pull up Iron Man on YouTube, slow it down to, your choices are half or quarter speed. You can also speed it up too, which 
I'm not going <laughs> to do Why would you do that? <laughs> I'm trying to help that song. And so I set um, the YouTube um, video to half speed. Mm -hmm. And it does a pretty good job of keeping the sound okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. And so I can just hear what's going on. And, and I have picked up this solo. Well, I shouldn't say I've learned it. But, you know, over the last two weeks, I've gone through it mm -hmm. and been playing it. Yeah. You know, and having a good time with it. So that was a pretty major milestone for me. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, when you get to the point where you can actually like play a song like all the way through, it's like a big deal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I know when I was, you know, learning a lot of tunes, it was like, not that I ever learned a lot of tunes, <laughs> but it's like, um, this solo is often the ones, the, the bit you put up away for a little bit you know it's like yes i can play crazy train except for the solo right and then eventually you get to okay now i can play crazy train it's like and now i can play you know something like you know harder but not the solo <laughs> because you know some of the music that i like is like the guitar guys are really good <laughs> yes you yeah. know you get these like sweet picking monsters like john petrucci and you know momstein or somebody like that and it's kind of like well i'll never learn those solos you know right. i'm just not a sweet picker anyway Right. Um, so the best you end up doing is, you know, you find your level, you know, and I got stuck somewhere around Van Halen. <laughs> so, oh, hey, that's, <laughs> just, that's, over. that's a pretty good place. I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's yeah. good, you know, and so, but like right now it's like, it would take really concerted effort. It would take a, you know, probably a few years the way you did with, with that or a couple of, whatever it was to do like my fave guys, you know, like Vito Brada's stuff and to make it like really sound good. Sure. You know how you can sort of pick things apart and do, I can do this little bit and this little lick and this, you know, and incorporate them into your own playing if you want. But it's that, uh, yes, I can ape it and make it sound like the record. That's a skill unto itself. Yeah, well, absolutely. And that's one of the nice things about learning the solo is it reminds me of, you know, being learning a solo helps you learn some runs and some licks that are nice to know. Yeah. And this is just basic pentatonic stuff. And mm -hmm. it's, oh, I didn't think about that combination of notes. Or right. it's, it's pretty easy to, you know, change keys with that because it's pretty much the basic pentatonic box is the first position that usually people learn. And so you can imagine taking that solo and moving it to A or G or whatever. Sure. And, you know, it's all pretty, pretty straightforward um, to do that. So you have to learn those kinds of things, which is nice uh, on top of just being able to say, hey, I've got the song down. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, and I, I go through my repertoire list on my iPad and it's like, oh, yeah, I know that song, but not the solo. I know that song, but not the solo, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And so I, mean, I, I think it makes some sense to go back through that list again and see which ones do I really want to learn the solo to. Yeah. And, yeah. and try to like not let myself say, well, I don't want to learn that solo because I think it's too hard. Right. Right. And I mean, obviously there's some that that's what they're going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's no doubt. Part of the problem, well, it just depends too on, on what kind of uh, genre you like. I mean, the whole thing about, you know, coming up in the eighties for me, it was mostly about the solo, you know, the guys with the long hair and spandex and whatever and, and just doing the shred guitar stuff where a lot of times, not always, sometimes the rhythms were inventive and, and had a lot of movement in them too. Van Halen was actually one of the better ones that way. But it's like uh, a lot of the guys were just like – they were just chugging power chords, you know. Right. But then Solo came up and it was like – you know. And so you could stack up a bunch of songs and uh, – except for the solos. Right. You know, in the band I had in high school, we had two guitar players and, and the, my uh, compatriot was a pretty good guitar player. So I took half the solos. He took half. And the songs that he did the solos, I never learned those solos. Right. <laughs> I just have no idea. Right. That's cool. Yeah. So what did you guys play? A lot of Priest and Maiden. Okay. And we were big into that. Yeah. And uh, which was good because those guys are good players, but not like stellar players. Mm -hmm. um, the later stuff, like Glenn Tipton from Priest, got pretty quick. And so his uh, certain licks we got, got kind of hard. But I could always cover those guys. Um, and we did a couple of Van Halen tunes. We liked Night Ranger a lot. Um, we all liked the twin guitar guys because then we liked doing the little harmony bits too. 
Right. So he, he like sometimes I'd take a solo, he'd take a solo, we'd do the little harmony bits, and that was always fun. Um, but they weren't like we never did Malmsteen stuff because neither right. one of us could cover that. Right. You know, and now we probably very few Satriani or you know any post Van Halen stuff. You know, but that's cool. You know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's a big deal to be in a band because you're standing up in front of people playing good songs. <laughs> And of course, you're your biggest critic, right? You oh, know yeah. what you screw up. The, the audience, they don't know when you screw up. The audience doesn't care about what guitar you're playing, what amp you're playing through, right? Yeah. And what notes, what like single notes you screw up. They just yeah. want to say, do I recognize the music and I'm having a good time? Normal people are like that. The bad part yes. about being in the 80s where you did have a few guitar players out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. those guys were pretty critical because yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, um, you know, an uh, Olympic event to guitar players. Uh-huh. And everything was an athletic competition. Mm-hmm. And so they'd be, you know, back talking to each other and whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's all part of, of performing, though. Oh, it's true. I mean, you could, and the end of, at the end of the day, you could spend, you know, months and months, like, learning the really hard guitar parts and impress the three guitar players in the audience. Or you could learn to play more than words and impress all the girls. Yeah. <laughs> There's this, there's this picture I saw on Facebook, I think it was a few years ago, that had, because, um, like, you know, those Facebook pictures that are mostly words. And mm-hmm. uh, one of it says, you know, uh, rock player, rock um, guitarists play three chords in front of 3,000 people. Jazz guitarists play 3,000 chords in front of three people. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and so you're right. You know, the most of the, the, most of the people, they just want to hear more than words. And that's it's true. Know, they're after so, well, not to uh, totally derail uh, the conversation here at all, but I did come across something interesting when I was reading Guitar World the other day. And um, audience that have listened to our show in the past may remember that about a year ago, I was looking for a new amp. Mm-hmm. And I started looking for a, um, a tube amp. But I was having problems finding one that I really liked that could justify the price of, too. Mm-hmm. Well, I just found out that Vox now has an AC-10. Do they now? That they're selling. 10-watt amp. Because the AC-15 was cool. It was a little high wattage for where I want to play. And I think it was like $700, mm-hmm. dollars, you know, in that ballpark. The AC-10 comes in at $500. Uh-huh. Which is, you know, noticeably less. Right. It's a 10 watt amp. Uh, and I like the Vox sound. Yeah. So I was thinking, boy, where was this amp like nine months ago? Yeah. So what did we compare to the Fender Blues Junior and the PV Classic 30? We we're looking at those. Yeah. And there Wasn't was there like a, a Night Train? Yeah, there's a Vox Night Train G2. How does that compare to the AC-10? I think we need to make a trip to a guitar store. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yes. <laughs> or if there is someone from Vox listening to our show and would like to send us. One of each. One of each. <laughs> we'd be happy to return it. Absolutely. Yes. We'd be happy to return both of them, actually. Uh but we would also be happy to, to do an A-B test on our show and people can compare oh, the Night Train G2 to the, the Vox. I don't know that we have anybody from Vox listening to us, though. <sighs> Probably not. That's, Probably. that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, I like the Night Train when we listen to it. Um, I, it. I can't remember the specifics, but, I mean, there were some of the things we were playing. I was definitely leaning toward the Vox. But um, I think in the end I like the PV a little better. But in any case, listen back, listeners, to our previous show, How to Buy an Amp, and and see what we actually said. Yeah, Uh, It kind of blurs together. Yeah, I would say right now, I think I like the the Night Train better. And then somebody listens to the show is like, he was clearly preferring the Blue (laughs) Train. That's fine. (laughs) It's too far. Bring it. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's too long ago. I can't remember. (laughs) No. But yeah, so um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the uh, what the difference is. I'm sure with the AC moniker, it's going for like the classic Vox thing. And I'm pretty sure the Night Train. One of the things about it was they're trying to cover a little more ground. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. With, with that. Well, in addition to there were other Night Train model amps that were just the head. So this was like a head co- uh, combo. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, one by 12, I think it were one by 10, maybe. Uh, yeah. Something along those lines. And I was looking for a combo anyway. Um, was not looking for a head in the cabinet. So anyway, I thought I would mention that and think, geez, that would have been nice to have available to me as an option, at least. Tis true. I don't know if I would have, you know, ended up getting that over the Mustang that I got, but possibly. Well, we're going to go see anyway. I I still have to, I still have to play the PRS, you know, uh, S2 series. Anyway. Yeah. That's another conversation we've been talking about. This S2 series I really want to check out. (laughs) This, yeah. From Maryland, it's a Maryland-made guitar, and that's that's my justification. Yes, and it's pretty. It is, but I gotta play it because uh, they say it's a little thicker neck, you know, than some of the other series, and eh, not my thing. But uh, I, this is totally from ignorance because I haven't played it, so I don't know how it fits the hand. I'd love to compare it to the SE series. Yeah, and see if the price difference is justified or not. Right. Um, I, I just don't know. I, I have almost zero experience with PRS guitars. Yeah, well, I haven't for a while. I mean, um, actually, the first one, I I think it was the first couple of years they made them. Uh, a friend of mine from college got one. And it was very plain. Like, I, I don't know if they weren't doing the T-tops or if he just got a cheaper one. And, you know, because it was a, a solid painted color. I think it was white. <laughs> pretty, wow. pretty boring looking guitar. But, man, it played sweet. You know, it's really nice. Seemed to me to me at the time to be kind of the perfect mix of sort of Fender-ish and Gibson-ish, you know, um, with a trim that wasn't a double locking thing yet still stayed in tune, which, you know, at the time was hard for me to even believe, but, <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're really nice guitars. And I know the SE series has gotten, you know, good reviews for imports. Mm-hmm. Um, so they've done a lot of good things with imports. Oh, speaking of imports, by the way, I did find out that apparently Parker, big smile on my face, Parker is not actually going out of business. They are not, uh, I don't know if I said this before or not, it's stuck in my head. They uh, are not making American guitars right now. They're just importing, but they are looking for a buyer to uh, build their American stuff. So we'll see. But for the time being, you can still buy a Parker, even if it's <laughs> imported. So here's another appeal. If you're a listener to our show and you have piles of cash, <laughs> buy Parker's buy American, Parker's American, American Division. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. Have Parker keep making guitars in the Christ US. Make me happy. Yes. Make, make Jesse happy. Otherwise, he's going to end up, we're going to have to film a commercial with him with a tear down his face. Yeah, because like the three I have are not yeah. enough. <laughs> Someday I want one more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't want to have to resort to eBay to buy a used, right? He uh, wants to be able to. You just never know. It's that fresh, brand spanking new Parker USA guitar. That's what he wants. So, yes, yeah, so I don't know if we have any listeners with piles of cash, but if you do, go for it. Good business opportunity, right? Yep. I was uh, looking at the um, the chord charts here for Freddie Freeloader. It's actually uh, simpler than I thought it was. Um, I can't remember these from when I looked at them years ago. Right. Um, so that A five seven, that is actually like a temporary key change. You're right. That's mm-hmm. what's going on is you put the E flat before the A flat. That makes the E flat sort of a, a temporary two, and then going to the B flat or the A flat rather. So you get this, and this is, they do this a lot in jazz where it's kind of like um, a very temporary chord or tonal center. You know, so it's like here's a two five and here's a two five in a different key and a two five in a different key. And there's all kinds of different ways that you can shift those keys to make them. I don't want to say follow the rules because jazz isn't so much about rules, it's more about kind of just whatever sounds good. But there's a lot of ways to do that. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really interested in getting into jazz quite yet, mm-hmm. but it's been good to hear these different sounds. Yeah. And right now, I mean, I'm playing real boring. I'm playing quarter note, like rhythm, like bomb, bomb, yeah. bomb, bomb, you know, because uh, especially straight note chaser has a bar where there's, you know, two beats of A, two beats of D. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to get too fancy with a strumming pattern where I'm trying to learn to change the chord in a bar, you know, comfortably and all that stuff. So I'm trying to take baby steps as and, and I'm really trying to focus on 
the sound because if I get too crazy with the strumming pattern, then more of my mental facilities will be too. Yeah, and you're not taking in the aura. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, and, and, that, and there's some new sounds in there. I'm, uh, what does he have you doing for the D7 thing? Uh, so you, was, you have the A is the A uh, minor seven flat five, right? Uh, I've been just playing an A minor seven. Okay. And then goes to a D7. Yep, D dominant seven. Okay. That's all I've been doing. That's a good idea. I could try that and see what that sounds like the minor seven flat five and see uh, how that sounds. I've been throwing in a couple ninth chords here and there just to see how it sounds with that. Mm-hmm. Spicing it up a little bit. But, yep, you can do that. Because generally, from what I understand, if you see a seventh chord somewhere, you can throw a ninth or a thirteenth in there too, and it's generally okay. Yeah, and a lot of times it's like yeah, some will be in the key, like whether it's a flat nine or, or you know a regular nine or a flat thirteen or whatever. Depends on where it falls in the key. Mm-hmm. Um, but jazz, more than anything, will change the rules so they'll throw something in there that's not you know in the key just because of the flavor of it just kind of that sounds interesting you know it'll just add a temporary tension because you know the next chord is going to resolve and that's what the whole game is about you know right so yeah that's cool this is good now yeah. you gotta, gotta learn these songs yeah i should have already known these songs <laughs> well, well you know i yeah, it's 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 been interesting. Uh, like I said, I don't want to go too deep into the jazz world, mm-hmm. but the the nice chord combinations has been it's been fun. Yeah, you know, and you know, speaking of of listening to new sounds, I've been uh, pushing my aural training further, mm-hmm. and I've plateaued. Um, uh, I'm using Justin Guitar's ear training app and there's multiple tests. I mentioned this before in past shows, but the first level is just a fourth and a fifth. Right. The second level introduces the, uh, these are all ascending intervals, by the way, Mm -hmm. uh, major second, major third. And, um, no, that's it. Major second, major third. Mm -hmm. And then the third test introduces the major sixth, major seventh and octave. And I've plateaued there. And trying to just, you know, pass that test, I am, I need more work. Mm -hmm. I know it's a matter of time in and just slugging it out and studying and listen to, you know, one note after another. I wonder if it would help to actually play the intervals on the guitar. It's sort of, because you're used to sort of playing the guitar. I mean, that's your modus, Uh, you know, and so maybe it'll just connect a little better with that sound and that. That's not a bad idea. Sort of connect the audio to the physical yeah. playing maybe a little bit. Might might be worth a shot anyway. Yeah. I mean, I've been trying all these reference songs. The problem is, you know, the songs that start with like a, an ascending six or seventh, there are not a whole lot of them, you know, yeah. the, the, the lists online at least. Um, That's because so they're weird intervals to sing. <laughs> they are. Yeah, they are. I've been using um, – He's a jolly good fellow, I believe, starts with a perfect six or a major six. So I was uh, looking at uh, some charts online. So I've been trying to map that. But boy, the major seven just keeps throwing me off. Yeah. I'm getting better at recognizing the six. I'm getting a lot better at real world recognizing of fourths and fifths. Mm-hmm. Uh, my a friend of mine just got a mandolin a few months back. He uh, I was at his house the other day. He handed it over to me, and I was like, "Oh, what's the tuning?" And I played two open strings. Oh, it's a fifth. Mm-hmm. And I was able to do that. Whereas earlier this summer, I would not have been able to do that. Right. Right. And there you um, go. Yeah. He would have told me like what the two notes are, and I would have been counting half steps to try to figure out, you know, yeah. what what the tuning is to. So, uh, so progress on all fronts, even if I have plateaued. Uh, I know that after this test, uh, I'll have to finish the rest of the intervals, then start descending, Mm -hmm. which will be fun, too. Yeah. And just trying to get my ear better. I've pretty much put away the whole process of learning nursery rhymes by ear. (laughs) That's probably good for your sanity. (laughs) It is. It's insane. (laughs) And the thing is, too, is that every one I tried, I was eventually able to figure out in less than a day. Yeah. So I feel like I'm doing okay. Right. You know, with that. But this whole interval training is something that needs to get done. Well, you might want to set aside the uh, ascending six and sevens and go to the next, you know, the first descending one because that might, for whatever reason, just 
be, oh, yeah, boom, no problem with that. And then on to the next one, you might just have a couple of sticking points that will remain for a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I totally get that. My concern is I think the next test contains all the uh, – oh. like so the next test would be like flat two, flat three, mm-hmm. right? And so I think the next test has the six, seven, eight and then introduces the flat. Right. Okay. So I don't know, you know, musictheory.net has exercises and they're outstanding, but I find that I can hear the intervals better on Justin Guitar's app. Just because of the sound? Yeah. I think so. I don't know. Or maybe it's because I'm playing through my iPad speakers and for some reason I hear that better through the smaller speakers, which would make no sense to me. Well, it would actually because you're now, if there isn't a lot of harmonic content to the speaker because it doesn't have much treble to it, um, like I'm probably really reaching here. But if all you're hearing is the fundamental, uh-huh. um, then it's easier to hear the interval than if you're hearing sort of harmonics. Okay. Because harmonics can sort of confuse things a little bit, I, I would think. Yeah. You know, that would make sense. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's sort of what I've been slugging through. Sweet. Yeah. You hardworking musician person. Yeah. What are you ever going to do when the school school year starts? <laughs> I know. I'll have to go back to my real job and play less guitar, which I just don't like that option right now. Uh, Not looking forward to it. Now yeah, Christmas break is coming. Yeah, that's true. Christmas break is coming. It's only just a few months away. It's true. And there's an AC-10 out there. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to plant that seed. And if, if Neil listens to this show... My wife listens to this show long enough. She's going to curse your name, Jesse. I know. It's terrible. <laughs> it's going to be one of those things where it's like she's – and I just want to say she has been golden about this whole guitar thing. This whole wall is behind you. Oh, oh yeah. Up to this point. It, she just been – and and she's the sweetest person. <laughs> so I can't even imagine her doing this. But I can imagine finally there's just a straw that breaks the camel's back and it's like <laughs> – <laughs> And all of a sudden, like the next episode, I've got one less guitar behind me. Let's <laughs> start these things off. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, she's been out. She's been great about the whole uh, hobby for sure. Mm-hmm. And she also knows that that's my personality is when I get to a hobby, I get into a hobby. Yeah. Uh, I went crazy when I was doing martial arts. Now I'm going crazy with, with guitar. It's just it's what I do. Yep. It's just one day I, she's going to just say, OK, now I want a yacht <laughs> or something. <laughs> I'll have to start selling off guitars. I don't, yeah, I, that's right. Roll it out. So. Uh, all right. So anyway, uh, I think we have uh, run our course. Indeed. We have gotten through our topics, not that we had any planned. Uh, so. Folks, if you like what you hear, please click like on the YouTube video. Click subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe at iTunes. Leave us a review. Leave us a comment. You can follow us on uh, Twitter at SST Show. And let us know how we're doing. And if you have topics you'd like us to talk about, please tweet us. Please post a comment. We would love to have suggestions. Send us questions. Send us comments. Yes, Definitely. absolutely. If you have questions you'd like us to answer, um, Please send them our way. Uh, But until next time, just keep picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 